Hey guys, it's Andy here from CNC Labs. Today I'll be talking about adding a laser module to your long mill. I have a 5 watt LMC 450B that I bought online for about $70 that I'll be using. There are a lot of different laser modules that you can find online, such as on AliExpress, but I'll cover a couple different things that you want to look for when buying a laser. The first thing you want to make sure is that your laser module can support PWM control. PWM, or pulse width modulation, is a way that the control board on your long mill and the laser can communicate on for turning on and off the laser, as well as varying the intensity of the beam. Make sure to check the description of your order page to make sure that your laser allows for PWM control. The second thing you want to make sure you have is that the laser you're buying comes with the power supply and driver. You need all three items to be able to run the laser, and it's a good idea to get all three while you're buying your laser module. It's also important for us to talk about laser power as well. Lasers come in a variety of different strengths, and the stronger they are, the faster they can cut and engrave. However, stronger lasers are usually a lot more expensive, and you have to watch out that the seller isn't mislabeling or overclocking their lasers. You can see here in this description, it has a max pulsed power of 15 watts, but the average power is 8 watts, so your mileage may vary. The 5 watt laser that I have is a bit slow for cutting, but I find that for engraving it provides more than enough power. So I can say that a 5 watt laser is a good place to start, and it's relatively inexpensive compared to the higher power lasers. First thing I needed to do to get this laser onto the machine was to extend the wires between the laser module and the cooling fan on the module itself. I used some scrap wire and some butt splices to join everything. You can use solder and heat shrink tubing to get a better connection, but I kind of wanted to do it quickly, so I'm just using butt splices. Uh, here's a photo of the laser driver I had, and you can see on the left side, there are two plugs for the laser and the fan. So you can use this to kind of follow how you would uh, extend the wires for your laser and fan as well if your driver doesn't look the same as this. The other thing I needed to do was to make a mounting plate for the laser. I did that by drawing one on Onshape and cutting out the design uh, out of acrylic on the long mill. On the router mount itself, you can find threaded holes on the side, which you can use to mount the plates using M5 screws. So I would recommend if you're attaching a laser that's not the same as mine to make a mounting plate and use those screws to hold it down. <clears throat> I'm now going to wire everything through the drag chain and to the controller, which is of course a super tedious process of popping out all the tabs and putting them back in again. But we need to get the wires to the control board. I've then stripped the wires on the laser driver for the PWM input and used the detachable screw terminals on the long mill control box to connect the leads. Just as a quick note, the polarity of the wires are important, so make sure you double check that they're correct. Our last step is going to be to turn on laser mode for our machine's firmware. The Gerbil documentation on GitHub has a lot of information on laser mode if you're interested in learning more. To activate laser mode, first connect your machine in UGS or other G-code sending software, then send the command $32 equals 1. This activates laser mode. To turn off laser mode when you're done using it, send the command $32 equals 0 to turn that off. And there you have it, installing a laser onto your long mill. I hope that this video gives a good starting point for installing a laser onto your long mill. I put a lot more information in the description, so make sure to check that out. Thank you, and until next time.